For Tom Carroll, there really is only one way to greet the dawn. He's been drawn east to the ocean all his life. As long as he can remember, he belongs out here. Does it give you the same joy? It gives me the same sort of joy. Um, I can still go out and get incredible um, connection to myself in the ocean. If the ocean has been Tom's mistress, he has been her master. One of the greatest surfers ever to put foot on fiberglass. Even at 51, he still shows the form that made him a two-time world champion. ever. Always will be. So it's no exaggeration that Tom, your brother, is being hailed one of the greatest surfers of all time? No, it's not exaggeration at all. The height of a jockey, the strength of a boxer. Tom Carroll is utterly fearless in the surf. Getting hit by an avalanche of white water never worried him. But a drug called ice almost buried him. Tonight, Tom Carroll is surfacing as a drug addict. It was killing me. It was killing me uh, from the inside out. Desperate? Desperate. I was desperate. Uh, yeah, that's a good word. <laughs> oh, very desperate. I was a desperate addict. And, um, uh, and I didn't stop there. I mean. It's a powerful life force inside me that's trying to kill me. To understand why a man so at home at sea could get so utterly lost on land, you have to go back to the beginning, to Newport on the northern beaches of Sydney. Tom, the youngest, Nick and his sister Josephine were the children of Sydney Morning Herald editor Vic Carroll and their mother Janet. My only memory really of her was just on the kitchen floor and um, sort of um, me inquiring about, you know, when is my birthday? And, and she said, oh, you're going to be four in, in three months. I remember her saying that. Tragically, Janet Carroll died from pancreatic cancer when Tom was only seven. But her last Christmas present to her son, a cool light surfboard, would shape his life. There was the beginning. There it is. You know, my mum passes away. Uh, I was given a surfboard. And then all the ocean was close by. And along came this incredible urge to be in the ocean. Every waking moment, every spare second, Tom begged his dad to take him surfing. Then, one Thursday afternoon down at Newport Beach, destiny. I'm going to stand up on this wave and it let me up and I stood up for this moment before I hit the shore right in front of my father and my sister. And I said, Dad, did you see that? I stood up for a minute and he said, no, Tom, you're up for about a couple of seconds and I, <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> Tom Carroll was on his way. And with his older brother Nick, surfing became everything. While Nick claimed two Australian Open titles, Tom conquered the world, twice in 1983 and 84. 
But it was here at Pipeline on the north shore of Hawaii that he really had to prove himself on a wave that is both perfect and deadly. That's definitely a place where we, where we mount and, and, um, and get to see who we really are with the wave. At Pipeline, Tom Carroll became the man. Revolutionising how the wave was written. But in 1987, the whole world got to see what Tom Carroll was truly made of. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that was um, one of the most extraordinary days <laughs> I've ever had. And, um, <clears throat> Tom fronted up to the final of the Pipeline Masters just hours after learning that back in Australia, his sister Jo had been killed in a car crash. That day, he surfed like he'd never surfed before. Miraculously, I was in tune with the ocean, like in, in a way I hadn't ever felt before in competition, especially. It was a pure moment, there was no, nothing, nothing was getting in the way, and I knew that um, what my father told me over the, he said, I looked out, I think Joe would like you to stay in Hawaii instead of coming home, because I was ready to jump on the plane. He said, she'd probably want you to win that, you know. That probably was the greatest tribute you could <laughs> yeah. make that day for her. That was it, yeah, it was, for, it was for Joe. I think it's really telling, the way Tom can operate on different levels. I think maybe it changed things for Tom in ways that didn't, might not even be clear now. With two more Pipeline Masters, Tom Carroll cemented his place in surfing history. He signed a million dollar contract, married his girlfriend Lisa, and became dad to three beautiful girls. He had it all, or so it seemed. What few knew was that Tom Carroll was slowly losing his life to drugs. You had your first line of cocaine when you were... 18, yeah. And in this time, it mm. didn't feel wrong. I was one of those kids that was shy and I, I needed something to connect. Uh, well, the first time I actually took something, I actually... Um, in a social situation, I realised that I could loosen up and connect. Cocaine, ecstasy, LSD. For more than 20 years, Tom would binge, sometimes for days, straighten out, but then relapse. Nick Carroll became so worried, he found Tom's dealer and rang him. So I say, well, what, what um, hand do you write with? He said, oh, right hand. I said, all right, well, look, if I find you've been giving my brother cocaine, I'm going to come up there, I'm going to break your right arm. And there was, there was a silence, and then the voice at the other end said, what? And there was just silence. And I said, look, are you clear? And he's like, yeah. So I just hung up. And uh, I never knew it was Tom on the other end. <laughs> that was you mm. who took the call. Yeah, I took the call. You happened to be with the dealer. Well, he wasn't actually in the room. I was actually the only one in there. I just grabbed the phone for him. And, uh, and lo and behold, it was my brother on the other end of the phone. You never let on? I never let on. In 2002, Tom Carroll started using ice. As powerful as it is addictive, it rapidly became his drug of choice. I felt this insidious need to take, to take more of it. I mean, I'd only have to take a little bit of it and, uh, you know, at the beginning, and it'd last for a long time. 
What did it do to you? I was at a point when, um, uh, you know, I was had to use every day to be functional. And every day? Pretty much every day. I got daily. And that was, that was that's when I realised, you know, that I got, you know, I mean, it was, it had me. Did your personality change? Sure, I was completely manic and um, um, my response to everything was um, like fearful and uh, I was crazy. Like um, I was getting to that point where <laughs> I was running around like a chook with his head cut off like you do on amphetamines in general. This didn't stop, you know, it didn't stop when he stopped being a pro surfer. It didn't stop when, you know, he'd kind of shaken off the last of his, you know, competitive aspirations. Uh, it didn't stop when he had three kids. It was here, here it was, you know, and it was, and it was going to kill him. Well, what did bring it to a halt? What, what ultimately stopped you in your tracks? Um, yeah, for me, I just felt so um, hollow uh, emotionally. Um, I wasn't connected to anyone anymore, um, other than the dealer and the drug. In 2006, just before Christmas, Tom checked into the South Pacific Rehab Hospital. Around this time, Nick, trying to learn more about his mother's life, accessed her medical records. I spent an afternoon just sitting on the floor reading it. Uh, uh, it's really dark material. Uh, I read a section where they described that they'd had a strong suspicion that she'd been a, a drug addict, that she'd had multiple drug addiction issues and that uh, mm -hmm. chief among those was amphetamines. Um, and. Uh, as soon as I read that, I kind of, I, I saw the pathway that had happened here, you know, um, at least part of it. Janet Carroll's addiction was a secret not even her husband Vic had known. For Tom, it was the knowledge he needed. How powerful was that information? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it's an incredibly powerful piece of information for me. And um, this, this disease of addiction, it, it, it's a family thing. It, it goes way back. And it's no wonder that, you know, my first response to an amphetamine was, ah, that's right. You know, it feels right. Tom Carroll understood he now faced a lifelong battle with addiction. But he didn't realise how difficult it would be until six months into rehab when he came face to face with his ice dealer at a roundabout. And asked to score off him. And he said, yeah, it's on this afternoon. I said, yeah, OK, well, that's great. Well, I've got your number in. I tapped his number into my phone, but I didn't save it. Kept on going through the roundabout, looking at him in the rear vision mirror, taking not even Knew, knowing, knowing that I had to take an action without thinking at that point and then just wiping the phone number. And I consciously wore, um, deleted the number then. Had I saved the number, life would be a lot different right now. I'll tell you now it is. Life saving. Life saving. Uh, I looked in the rear vision mirror. Even then, looking in the rear vision mirror, I wanted to turn around and chase him. But he didn't. And today, seven years on, Tom Carroll is clean. It's come at a cost though. Tom and his wife Lisa separated and he's worked hard to bond with his children who've had to understand their dad is an addict. And you know, he's with Gracie surfing. Yeah, she's about to get. <laughs> she's about to get away. Yay! Oh. Tom's daughters have their dad's same love of the sea, and eldest daughter Jenna 
is grateful that she has her father back. I've got no anger towards my father for being that way. I just, I just respect what he's done and um, really proud of him, if anything. Mm. Now that you see your dad in recovery, do you see the difference? Oh, he couldn't be a different person now. Like, really? The person that I knew for the first 14 years of my life isn't, he just isn't that anymore. It's been a long, turbulent ride, but Tom Carroll has finally found peace. He has a new partner, Mary Graham, who shares his passion for the water. And he has a brother who's shown that he'll always be by his side. Oh, God, geez, Nick, I really thank, thank you for everything. And he goes, oh, well, sometimes, you know, you know, you know we'll, we need each other's shoulders to stand on, you know? And I love that. You know, I just felt that support, that brotherly support, and um, mm. and I'll, I'll be there for my brother. So it's just sort of, it sort of affirms that nice space that, you know, family are there for, you know, to help each other along. You're obviously proud of where he's come to. Oh, I'm deeply proud of Tom. He's my little brother. <laughs> <laughs>